the 1st of September, 1939. After a false accusation that the Poles attacked a German radio station, Nazi Germany launches a retaliatory campaign against Poland, triggering World War II. After defeating the Polish army, the Germans ruthlessly suppressed the Poles, whom they considered to be racially inferior. And in the weeks that follow the German attack on Poland, German SS, police, and military units shoot thousands of Polish civilians, including many members of the Polish nobility, clergy, and intelligentsia. In the fall of 1941, Nazi Germany begins to implement a plan codenamed Operation Reinhardt to systematically murder almost two million Jews living in the German-administered territory of occupied Poland called the General Government. Three killing centers are established as part of this plan. Belzec's, Sobibor, and Treblinka. One of the main perpetrators of this operation becomes Johann Niemann. Johann Niemann, the middle of nine siblings, was born on the 4th of August 1913 in the village of Ferlin, then part of the German Empire. Johann's father Klaas was a farmer, and his mother Bilda was a housewife. Niemann attended elementary school for eight years, studied with a local master painter, and passed his journeyman's examination. From 1930 to 1933, Germany faced a grim reality. The global economic depression had devastated the country, leaving millions without work. Johann Niemann was among the millions of Germans who believed that Hitler was Germany's only hope, and in April 1931, he joined the Nazi party. Two years later, on the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany. The following year, Johann Niemann became a member of the SS and started to serve as a guard at the Esterwagen concentration camp. From there, Niemann was sent as a guard to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, which was located north of Berlin. The camp held Jews, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, Roma and Sinti people, and later Soviet civilians. In 1939, Niemann's son August was born, and in December of the same year, he married his longtime girlfriend, Henriette Frey. The Second World War started on the 1st of September 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. The same year, Niemann started to work for the Nazi euthanasia program, codenamed T4, which was the systematic murder of institutionalized patients with disabilities in Germany. The patients were transported by bus or by rail into six killing centers, where they were murdered. In these centers, the Germans gassed, shot, or killed by lethal injections those who were deemed unworthy of life, such as residents of welfare institutions, some concentration camp inmates, the chronically sick, the mentally and physically disabled, homosexuals, and even sick German soldiers. Niemann worked at the Bernberg Euthanasia Center, and his duties included moving the murdered victims from the gas chambers to the crematoria. The T4 program predated the genocide of European Jewry, the Holocaust, by approximately two years, and historians estimate that the program claimed the lives of 250,000 men, women, and children. In August 1941, Niemann was promoted to SS Oberscharführer, which was equivalent to Staff Sergeant. Next, Niemann helped establish the Belzec's killing center, where he essentially commanded Camp 2, which was the extermination site of the camp. Beginning in March 1942, Jews from various parts of the general government, which was an annexed territory of Poland run by German authorities, were deported to Belzec, where they were murdered in gas chambers with carbon monoxide gas generated by large diesel engines. The authorities at the Belzec killing center consisted of a small staff of 20 to 30 German SS and police officials. Between March and December 1942, when the last transport of people arrived, the Germans deported approximately 434,500 Jews and an undetermined number of Poles and Roma people to Belzec, where they were killed. Only seven Jews who had been imprisoned at Belzec survived the war. The lack of viable witnesses able to testify about the camp's operation is the primary reason why Belzec is little known, despite the victim number count. 
In the spring of 1942, Johann Niemann helped establish the Sobibor Killing Center, and in that summer, he became the camp's deputy commander. He was also promoted to SS Hauptscharführer, which was equivalent to Master Sergeant. His daughter Johanne was born in May 1942, the same month the gassing operations began at Sobibor. The Germans constructed Sobibor as a rectangle, 1,312 by 1,969 feet. A double barbed wire fence woven with tree branches surrounded the perimeter of the camp. This design was intended to hide the view of what was inside. Approximately 50 German and Austrian personnel served at the site, and they were generally of lower middle class backgrounds. The SS officers lived in cottages with colorful names, which helped to conceal the purpose of the camp from new arrivals, who would arrive on the adjacent ramp. When the transports of 40 to 60 freight cars arrived at the Sobibor railway station, only 20 cars at a time were taken into the camp, while the rest of the victims remained locked in the rail cars. The victims were brought into the so-called arrival area, where an SS man gave a speech welcoming them saying they had reached a transit camp on their way to the labor camps. They were also told that before embarking on the next part of their journey that they were to take showers, have their clothing disinfected, and get a meal. The men and women were separated, and the children were sent with the women. The Nazis ordered the victims to remove their clothing and hand over their valuables. The Jews were then marched on the run to the gas chambers. The honking of geese would obscure the cries of the victims from those still sitting in the locked rail cars, as they were being beaten, screamed at, and having warning shots fired at them. About 450 to 550 Jews were forced into the chambers at a time. The gas chambers were then sealed once the maximum number of victims were inside. Poisonous gas was then piped in. Within 20 to 30 minutes, all those inside were dead. Those who were too ill, weak, or elderly to make the walk to the gas chambers were shot in an open pit. The SS personnel working at Sorbibor enjoyed a number of privileges, such as higher pay and regular visits home. Every three months, they could visit their families for two weeks. The SS also stole possessions of the victims, such as gold, food, hair, and other valuables. The guards would even take toys from murdered children home to their families. Johann Niemann participated in this plunder and was making sizable deposits of money each time he came home, where he was awaited by his wife and children. Between the transports, the SS personnel were not only drinking, but also playing music as well as enjoying card and board games. All of this was going on in a camp where thousands of people were being murdered. The camp's personnel consisted of barbers, butchers, one guard had a photo store in Weimar, and there was even a champion boxer who counted how many whiplashes it took for him to kill a Jew. He had a special heavy whip especially made for him. In brutality towards the prisoners, the Germans would compete with the Travniki guards. Travniki men were central and Eastern European Nazi collaborators, consisting of either volunteers or recruits from prisoner of war camps set up by Nazi Germany for Soviet Red Army soldiers captured in the border regions during Operation Barbarossa, launched in June 1941. Johann Niemann had no mercy with prisoners either. On one occasion, when 72 Dutch Jews were organizing an escape and were betrayed by the capo, Niemann ordered all of them to be executed. In June 1943, Johann Niemann was promoted to SS Untersturmführer, which was equivalent to second lieutenant. In summer of the same year, rumors began to circulate that Sobibor would soon cease operations, and the prisoners understood that this meant certain death for all of them. The Sobibor prisoners knew this, since the Belgez prisoners, who did the same work as they did, had sewn messages into their clothing before they were killed by the Sobibor guards, who had shot them the same day they arrived in the camp. The next day, the Sobibor prisoners found all their clothing full of blood, and Chaim Engel, a Polish Jewish prisoner, found a note in a pocket which said, We worked at Belgez for one year, and did not know where we would be sent next. They said it would be Germany, now we are in Sorbibor and know what to expect. Be aware that you will be killed also. Avenge us. And they did. 
In September 1943, 20 Jewish Red Army prisoners of war, the soldiers who had the necessary expertise to pull off an escape, arrived at Sobibor on a transport from the Minsk ghetto and were selected for labor. One of them, Alexander Pachersky, would become a leader of the revolt, which began late in the afternoon on the 14th of October, 1943. The targets were carefully selected, and because Niemann was the highest-ranking SS officer who was on duty that day, he was the first person targeted to be assassinated by the prisoners. On that day, at 4 p.m., Johann Niemann, after a ride on horseback, was lured to a scheduled appointment with a tailor in the tailor's barracks with a promise to be fitted for a leather jacket taken from a murdered Jew. When Niemann arrived at the tailor's barracks, armed with his pistol and whip as usual, Alexander Shubayev, a Jewish Red Army prisoner, was already waiting for him with an axe in his hand. When the 30-year-old Niemann came inside and asked the tailor what Shubayev was doing there with an axe, the tailor replied that he was there to repair the table. The tailor then asked Niemann to remove his pistol holster, put on the jacket, and turn around to check if any alterations were needed in the back. When Niemann complied, Alexander Shubayev snuck up behind him and buried the axe into the back of his head, splitting his skull open. Niemann was dead before he hit the ground. However, this was just the beginning of the revolt. In total, 11 SS officers were killed by the rebels. When one of them, Chaim Engel, was stabbing Rudolf Beckmann, the camp's head of the sorting commands, Engel could be heard shouting, This is for my father, for my brother, for all the Jews you killed. The prisoners had to escape by climbing over barbed wire fences and running through a minefield under heavy machine gun fire. Approximately 300 prisoners were able to escape, but most of them were chased down and killed. Those prisoners who had not joined the escape were killed as well. However, some 50 of the escapees did survive the war. Following the uprising, on Heinrich Himmler's orders, the SS and Travniki trained guards shot the remaining prisoners, raised the extermination side of the camp, buried all evidence, and planted trees to disguise the area. There were no tears shed for Johann Niemann. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.